Then we can talk about the Charlie Daniels band and Taylor Swift and, you know, like. That was a weird jump and then another weird jump, oh, yeah. Doug. I absolutely love band, it. But like, Houdini. What do you think about like, Dirk Bentley, though? I'm not sure I'm familiar with him. So. All right. Well, hold on though. I gotta, I gotta make another weird jump, right? Because like yeah, jump. I didn't, I didn't notice this particular part of your answer on the questionnaire until just now, which is you listen to disco writing plush. Yes. Right. And yeah, again, yeah. we obviously, we obviously That's haven't read plush great. because at the time of this episode dropping, you should only be able to pick up m- maybe two issues, maybe two, probably only one. To be real honest, I don't know that my math. And everything is right, and I'm not exactly positive of the release date of the first issue. Which, what is that, Doug? Uh, November 28th, I think. Okay, the November 28th. Issue. Yeah, no. Oh, shit, man. You might not even be able to pick up the first issue yet, to be real honest, by the time this drops. I don't know. I don't. It's been madness over here at the Quest, and I love it that way, right? But I want to know. Wait, what hold on. You said November most? 28th? November 28th, I believe, is the date. Oh, yeah, we're going to have this release, bro. Okay, whatever. Just make sure you check it out and pick up vinyl and plastic. Like I said, links in the comment or links in the description, or go to your local comic book shop. I personally highly recommend that more. <laughs> um, but Stand I want to know. What, but I want to know what were you listening to with vinyl, and what were you listening to most with plastic? If disco is what you were listening to with plush, <laughs> plastic was a while back, so I have to think about that one for a little. For vinyl, um, there was one key song, so. The Denzel Washington Equalizer movie. At the end of that okay. movie, the guy and it's, it's, it's evading me who does it. Um, but there, there's a song when he's like when he's just you know he's in the in the Home Depot basically and he's just killing these assassins, right? The soundtrack to that I just listened over and over and over because I loved it. Um, I got it on my phone. Uh, but yeah, that one. I mean, with vinyl, I'm trying to remember. I don't know if I had a playlist for vinyl back in that time. You know, that came out in 2017. So that that wasn't, I didn't have quite the playlist, you know, ability in 2017 that I have now. Um, let's see. Vengeance by Zach Hemsey is the one that I listened to. That's the, that's the final song in Equalizer. And it's just like this dark, like, basically, you know, the, the course is you're going to die. You know, and it's like, yes, this is what I need for serial killers and, and, and this kind of stuff, you know, and and for plastic. Oh, man, I wish I could remember. I think at that point I was still listening to a lot of soundtracks. So it might have actually, you know what? It was, um, oh, man. Uh, I can't remember the name of the movie off the top of my head. It was the one with like Kurt Russell and he's a fireman. Do you guys remember that one? Like him and his little brother uh, on the um, train? Um, 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 it doesn't, it has a term. It Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, no, that's not Fahrenheit, Backdraft. Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit. Huh? No, it wasn't Fahrenheit, no. No, it wasn't, it wasn't Backdraft, was it? Backdraft. All right, all right. I listened to the Backdraft, <laughs> I listened to the backdraft orchestral soundtrack, not like the songs that like Bruce Hornsby did, but the orchestral soundtrack to that because I loved the, the feeling of it. It had like a dark feel. All right, well, let's... Let's flip to something else you just said, man. As far as you didn't have the capacity back then as far as the playlist. So obviously mm-hmm. technology has just changed a lot. To that end, I want to know, Doug, what's your opinion of what technology has done to the comic book industry with digital comics, webtoons, all of this? And my partner's like, you stole that question. Whatever, man. He brought it to my head. Uh, and I say that because I love I love physical comics, bro. I hate – I absolutely like – there's part of me that hates – reading things digitally i know people do that's fine consume your media however you want to it's 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 yeah. whatever i don't care but what's your overall opinion of what that has done to the medium of comic books as a whole i don't i you know and i'm a i'm a physical paper guy like i love my comics right like so i like to hold my comics when i'm reading them but i don't think i've seen it really have a huge impact on comics um you know at least american comics um, webtoons and that kind of stuff, I think, are great because it gives you know it's another avenue for people to discover what we do. So there is that. Um, I can't. I've tried reading digital comics, you know, like American comics, and they just don't. I just can't. They they don't have the same appeal to me. So you know, I figured you know, it, like you said, like I love the physical aspect of touching one and reading one. I think having the double pages together 
is a better read. It makes more sense to me. Um, and I think writers and artists are still mostly focused on delivering it in a physical format versus the digital format, which probably hurts the digital format a little bit. But I mean, you know, it gives, you know, I sell <clears throat> 10 to 15 more percent of my books because digital's out there than I would if it wasn't. So, you know, I mean, it, does, it hasn't had like a huge impact, in my opinion. I absolutely love them. Yeah. I, that's how I read. That's how I read plastic. And the reason uh, I I can't do the whole double. I own plenty of comics. I do. I own over four hundred. But the thing is, is like when I'm reading them that way, my eyes jump mm -hmm. from the pages. It goes from one page to the next, one page to the next. And so, me with digital comics, it just shows one panel at a time. Mm -hmm. And that keeps, I guess that just helps me with my ADHD, but I'm just weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in the right company. So, yes, I think we're all a little weird in the room, but that's yeah. not here nor there. <laughs> that, that to me, that is the positive impact of it, right? So, like, if Hardaway can enjoy comics and enjoy more comics because of the digital aspect of it, that's a huge positive to me. So, like, that keeps Hardaway involved. And, and reading more comics. That's a win-win to me. I mean, yeah, I, I, I can't disagree in that, man. I think um, if it gets people of a younger age consuming comics, I'm totally down with it. Like I said, consume however you want to consume. I just get your comic on, for real, because it, <laughs> it needs to happen, man. You need to get your comic on, because I know for a fact, like we've even talked to past guests, where... Um, it's it's made it to where that's where they learn to read. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for comics, they would. And I know for a fact that um, I would not have the vocabulary I do. That's why I say my greatest influence as an MC is Stan Lee. And I say that because he's the man that really made the Marvel Universe what, what it was. I could name a thousand other writers up to and including you at this point, but I don't frankly have time to say my biggest influence in hip-hop was... And then an ass load of comic book writers. People will be like, that's right. nuts. Just saying Stan Lee is crazy enough. It's fine. Um, <clears throat> I forgot my damn question with my ramble. <laughs> that happened. That's it? your fault for your rambling and whatnot. Now, here's the other thing. All right. If there's a mainstream character that you can play with right now, who would you play with? A mainstream character. Yeah, you know, we'll skip that. We already talked about the X Men, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I get a solo character. Um, yeah, well, that was your child. That was your childhood favorite one. Right. This is the one now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, I, you know, I, I really love, like, you know, I'm going to go both universes here. You know, major universes. Um, Lobo and Deadpool. Although Deadpool scares me because Ryan Reynolds has killed it so well like deadpool 2 is one of my favorite movies <laughs> it's like almost absolutely perfection and i'm like i don't know if i can top that um but like i love lobo um any actually like a lot of minor characters i would love to get a hold of versus the major because i'm not sure like spider-man and superman have been around for so long i'm not sure i've got anything to add to it you know what i mean like and and, and will they let me you know, it's like, well, I'm going to take Spider-Man down this dark path, and, you know, and he's in love with a blow-up doll. And we're like, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> ben like, well, they did let Ben Riley happen, and, and that was pretty – Yeah, the clone saga, that was pretty oh, yeah. good. Well, let's flip this back then to the question that I remembered, right? Because uh, that's how my brain runs. So yeah, as question. I was saying, as far as what comics is done for literature, why do you think, especially at this point, man, because I feel that there is – people still kind of look down – at comics and like, oh, that's that's for kids, right? Right? And that still happens. And look, firstly, if you let your child read this, like if you let your child read this book and they're not a minimum of 16 years old, I, I'll go 50. I'd let a 15-year-old read this. But I think anything lower than that, you, you, you probably honestly should. I'm not trying to. Look, go read the IOD, right? That's that's if you want to read someone and you're and you're that age, yeah. right? So it's, it's obviously clear 
And then, I mean, if you look at so many other things, most of Garth Ennis' work, Swingers by Hawkins. I mean, I could sit here and go on and on with a thousand different comics. I wouldn't even necessarily recommend Watchmen or V for Vendetta to someone that probably wasn't at least the age of 15 just because of the sheer concepts there and what you're discussing. You know, it's it's a deeper level. Um, yeah. Why do you think there's still that stigma of it just being for kids? I mean, that's, you know, that's an age old question, I think, you know, I, I you know, Hardway already kind of touched on manga and anime from Japan and like there they have it for everything. Like every, if you go on the subway there, everybody's reading manga, like everybody's got one in their hand and the U.S. just can't seem to get, you know, the culture just can't seem to get past the fact that like cartoons and comic books aren't just for kids, even though we've had stuff like the Simpsons for over 20 years, right? They're still like, oh, but cartoons are for kids. And you're like, no, like, it, you know, like it, it doesn't have to be that way. And so, yeah, I mean, dude, that's I mean, that's a, a code nobody's been able to crack yet. Like why after this, the massive success of the MCU that continues to grow, right? You know, they've got a TV show out almost every week. And you're just like, how come people can't go? Why? Why wouldn't I pick up the She-Hulk comic? Oh, those are for kids. It's like, no. Did you not watch the show? Like, I don't know, man. I mean, that's again, you're you're hitting me with a tough one. That's like an enigma of like, I don't I don't know how to fix that that block. I mean, I I like to throw tough ones, bro. It's like I don't like to throw easy questions. I'm trying to make the world <laughs> like I'm trying to make the world spin on comics because it should. Because I feel like, in all honesty, if <laughs> More people read, let's be honest, Ed, the world would probably be a little better place, and I don't rightly care what you read, you know? But on the note of breaking the code, right, what would you do if the comic book code authority still existed? <laughs> oh, good God. I, I would have to self-publish. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's all there is to it. I mean, I, I mean I, nothing would come out. Like, I would have to, like, go and be like, okay, well, I'm just doing this on my own. Because, you know, Image wouldn't be able to publish my books. Image fair, wouldn't be Image able to wouldn't. publish Image if the Comic Book right. Code Authority still existed. Let's be, I don't, I don't think I've ever read anything <clears throat> from Image, period, that, that I personally have read that they could put that stamp on. They, there would be right. one thing or another. You know what I mean? Um, I, I mean, that's yeah. just the fact. Yeah, they're big um, hits, right? So, uh, and arguably. Saga, Walking Dead, Invincible. There's no way those three get a, a comics code. No way. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. I. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I, I agree wholeheartedly. It it would be kind of funny to watch, man. <laughs> so I, I wish I, I could offer y'all a Milky Way. Man, you always eating something hard away. So I'm I'm curious to that end. Um, with the downfall of the comic code, like, what do you think the comic, like comics now would be like, like say that just hadn't existed? Oh, if it hadn't existed? Yeah. Oh man. I mean, cause I know like if you read early Batman and stuff and then talk about what those guys wanted to do with that character, you're talking about like almost basically a serial killer in a costume. So, I mean, Batman would be so much darker because he'd be killing people left and right. Um, I mean, it'd be, yeah, it'd be so, I mean, think about the Punisher being invented, you know, during those times or think of even, uh, the obvious one. I didn't, I can't believe I missed it. Wolverine. Think about Wolverine in the eighties and nineties without a comic code. Like he's cutting people in half left and right. Like you're seeing all that. Like he's disemboweling people and probably eating it. Like <laughs> completely out of control. Right. I mean, you know, like there's, there's, you know, Cyclops blowing people in half, you know, or, or completely, you know, just cutting them in little pieces or, you know, whatever you want to say, you know, like, I mean, yeah, it would be a totally different ball game. And I hey, think, I'm sorry ahead. to interrupt, but I need you to write this down so you can look this up so you can watch it. Look up X. I think X? you will enjoy the shit out of it. Just X. Okay. I think you can look up the series and the movie. There's In my opinion, ones. though, real quick, the movie is way better than the series. I just have to say, that's just my opinion. I just my honest opinion. But he's he's probably definitely right. If you have not seen the anime X, I I would 
highly recommend it. Apparently, we're just here to recommend Doug to watch more entertainment. <laughs> yep, I like it. We're here to kick it and go on a quest. A That's journey right. of shenanigans, friendship, odd-ass questions. So what's like, your favorite question. candy? What's your favorite candy what's bar, Doug? Do you, hold on. No, no, no. Yeah, I want to know what your what favorite, favorite candy, candy bar is. is. Hey, hey, no. Hold on. I, I said I want to know what his favorite candy bar is, bro. That's all. Just just his favorite candy bar. That's a quick one. I mean, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think you can go wrong with Snickers. Like Snickers Man. and Twix are my two favorites. But Snickers probably I, out a little bit. because like I, I'm I agree not... with him. <laughs> I'm sorry. You got to give me a break, but that's besides the point, right? He's but a I'll genius. Hard away a break. That's, that's, but, why, that's, why you don't di- that's why you dislike Snickers and Twix. Because it's it, that's a, that's the candy of champions. Hey, yo, candy. firstly, firstly, I like Twix. All right, I just don't like Snickers because I don't like taking nuts. I like giving them. But that's besides the point. Hardaway, what was your question? <laughs> well, wait a minute. Like he can't he can't like totally disrespect our Snickers love and then not tell Man. us what your favorite candy bar is. Yeah, oh, saying, I do not said give me a break, Doug. Come on. What is he was a Kit Kat. That? Yeah, Kit give Kat? me a break. Okay. Give me a break. He was break a me Kat. off a piece of that. He, I ain't he, saying he, the rest of it. Don't sue us. <laughs> <laughs> That's cold. <laughs> Chocolate covered wafer. You know what I'm saying? I'll call you Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Man, I'd be leaving <laughs> snacks all around yeah. everywhere just like that. Well, actually, no, I take that back. That would totally be you. I would probably be leaving comic books around everywhere. Like, I'm reading. Action. Shit, I gotta put this up. Hold on. <laughs> hmm. I got a question. I know you did. Besides Santa Claus, it's been done. And if it's been if you do it again, I will fucking flip the fuck out. But <laughs> but because it's it's been done too many times, and there's this one series that I've seen that it was so good. If anybody ever attempted it, I'd be like, man, you're going to have to try a lot hard to come hard. But if there was one of those like fairy tale mythological holiday mm-hmm. creatures, because it doesn't matter if I believe in it. I know people don't. And people think I'm freaking crazy and childish and whatnot. But fuck you, the Easter Bunny's real. Um, if you uh, If you had a chance to write a story about one of them. Or all of them. What which which ones would you do, and how would you have that role? Oh man, um, I mean, Leprechaun's already been done. In the in the movie, so messed up. I love it, and I wouldn't want to ever touch it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's like so. I respect so that horrible, answer. But it's, it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> oh man, like a mythical or like <laughs> a holiday. I mean, with some holiday characters. Like, obviously, there's the Easter Bunny. That was what I was going to say, and then you stole it from me. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said, all I said well, was the Easter Bunny was real. Um, <laughs> technically, that was kind of done in a... Uh, oh, shit. What's the name of the series? I mean, the Easter Bunny's so fucked up, right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm mean, sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drift... No, no, I, no, no. I said Santa Claus. Santa Claus was the one that's been done. I have, I have yet to see a, a Easter Bunny one where I was oh. like, you know what, that was good. It's but, based on a comic. No, it's based on a fucking comic book, bro. You hold on. Um, it's oh man, it's gonna annoy the crap out of me. I can't remember the name of that show, and it's also a comic. Like I said, um, it's where old boy like gets his. Uh, but there's Father his, Time for New Year's. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, All that's right. gonna hold on and hold on one moment. Right. I'll hopefully have the answer to that. But it has been done once, both in comic book form. It wasn't the actual Easter Bunny. They were just taking Easter and like making it terrible. And like it's, a, it's God damn, did I even love the actor in that? That's gonna drive me nuts. I would highly recommend the series to anybody that's got time to sit and wants to watch something kind of sick and crazy. Um, oh, you son of a bitch, Factor! Come on, uh, basket. I, 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 it, it, ex- I it escapes me at the moment. We'll uh, email that to you when we figure when we figure that okay. out. We'll email that. To I'll, you. I'll have, I'll to have you, the but, answer um, to that 
somebody's probably been like, yo, factor, it's this, you idiot, already in the comments. But, but, but whatever. Yeah, but he asked, <laughs> he asked uh, uh, Holiday Care. So there's Father Time for uh, New Year's. Yeah, um, Bunny. I mean, you could take you Kwanzaa have, and you could take. You have uh, so many for Halloween. There's like countless for Halloween. I mean, you you can you, you can do the Headless Horseman. You could do um, the True Jack o' Lantern and his whole entire story, which was people Google that. Google the real story behind Jack o' Lanterns if you don't know that one. That one's beautiful. Um, but uh, Sam Hain and all them, you know what I'm saying? You can, uh, count. This is just so many for Halloween. It's just horrible. It's like Halloween got the most. Um, so why can I stay hard away? For Jack Frost? Hard away. You gave him a rough question, in my opinion, because there's very few things that are associated with that besides Leprechaun, Easter Bunny, and Santa Claus. I think those are the most... The three most common, and they've all been done in some capacity. I mean, I he can go. He can do four and ones. I mean, I, he can do four. He can do four and ones. Okay, I, I, my bad. That's why I said mythological I, too. Dude, you I had to test. Look, look Doug, Doug, how many, how many uh, mythological things do you know that come from other holidays that are in other countries, bro? How much are you trying to test his knowledge? <laughs> he's pushing me. He's like, <laughs> he's like, how how smart or dumb is Doug? <laughs> no, that's not how I'm we're gonna, we're gonna bad. I, make me feel bad and whatnot. Oh, yeah, how about an evil version of gargoyles? Yeah, gargoyles are cool. Oh, no. There's so many. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many cool things out there. I mean, that one's always a tough one. But like, what are there? There is some stuff over in like the Asian, like especially Malaysia and that kind of stuff. That like they've got some really weird shit that I'd love. Like their their version of vampires are so fucked up. Like. <laughs> I would love to like play with that and be like, you know, because people were like, did you come up with this yourself? And you're like, oh, no, no, this super tongue that shoots out and sucks your soul out. That has nothing to do with me. That's their version <laughs> of a vampire. You know, so like, oh, yeah. good God. Yeah. It's like, uh, there's so many cool, st cool things out there, you know, and it's like trying to do your own version of those based on, you know, the, the history that they already have, you know, would be so much fun. And I love, you know, especially when you get over into the Asian culture, like the color. The colorful stuff too, you know. Chinese dragons are cooler than regular dragons to me, oh, you know. Man. And the, their gargoyles are always cooler than our gargoyle, you know. The 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 European gargoyles. Um, there's so much to play with, so much to play with. Well, let me ask you. Let me just throw in something real, real random, right? I want to know why it is. It's only the color orange that is also the name of a fruit. But nobody calls purple grape or grape purple in reference to the color or the fruit or anything to that capacity. That is the only color where that happens. Is that what makes it your favorite color? And why is that? Are you talking about my favorite color is orange? Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought you were going like purple. Um, no, no, no. But I'm saying anything. yeah, <laughs> orange is the only color where it's a fruit and a color. You know what I mean? That, it's just one of those weird like. I was attracted to orange as a kid. You know, my favorite matchbox car was orange. And so like, it just was one of those things. And, and, and what I loved about it, even growing up, which is just, you know, kind of embracing your weirdness is like, nobody ever said orange was their favorite color. It was always like blue and green and shit. Right. So like, I was like, well, everybody loves blue. Like that, you know, when you do go through the class, everybody's like, yeah, blue, green, red. And I was like, eh, I like the weird one. I want the orange color. So I think it's just because it's like, you know what? It's the outcast of colors. Like you don't see a lot of people wear orange. You don't like see a lot of people embrace orange. Now, you know, obviously, you know, if you're a fan of, you know, say the Broncos or something, then you're going to wear, you know, orange and blue. But like you don't see people going, oh, I'm going to go get an orange shirt today. It's like, now they always get blue. I mean, look at us. Like, I mean, I've got orange on now, but like, you know, you've got blue on. You look like you've got like a brown or a dark green on. Like that's what we go. I, oh, I like the brightness on it. I got, I got black and uh, a pizza slice with uh, pepperoni that has skull and crossbone. Oh, sweet. I just got to kill a factor shirt. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, yeah, he re he's representing his group. I'm representing. It's because it's cold out here, bro, day. and I needed a hoodie. All right. Don't worry about what I might be doing with what's behind me. That's neither here nor there. Maybe you need to write a story about the unknown factor, Doug. Please don't. I don't need to have to explain myself like that. Um, <laughs> 
I really don't ever want to write have a to. story about us. He's the butcher. I'm the chef. Oh, uh, you're not recording this, are you? <laughs> I think we're past that time, dude. I mean, I mean, look, look. <laughs> firstly, if I'm not recording this, I'm really upset. This is supposed to all be a tribute to episode one, which was lost because I was a dingus, right? But we don't do that no more. Yeah. We don't do that no tribute. more. We don't. It's just a tribute to the greatest interview in the world, right? This isn't that, even though it's been phenomenal. All right, no, but real talk, out. though, if you had a chance, you'd shut your face. Um, if you had a chance, real quick, to choose any living artist to draw your work. And, and, and to be, in fairness, I'm going to take off the guys I've already worked with. Because, you know, obviously, yes. like people like yeah. Brian Stelfreeze, Tom Coker, like those guys are like, you know, Dan, you know, obviously Daniel Hilliard and, and the people that I've worked with already are, are incredible, and I love working with them. Um, you know, I I have a thing for Lionel Francis Yu. He's he's he. I love his work, and so he would be one that I would be like, oh yeah, like I think he and I could do some cool shit together. All right, so if you're watching this, <laughs> you now know. That you have a great writer that's just sitting there going, hey, bro, I think we can make a phenomenal paper baby. <laughs> yeah, I agree. That's exactly how I'm going to pitch it. <laughs> Hardaway, I love your use of the paper baby. That was. <laughs> Let's make paper babies together. That was. I was some. I, I really want to. I want. I really want writers and artists to start pitching things like that. Like, look, bro, I got this great story. <laughs> Can we make a paper baby together? <laughs> well, you know, that's how I'm going to start selling. Now to flip that together. on its head, though, to flip that on its head real quick. If you had a chance to co-write Ooh. with somebody, a series mm. that you haven't worked with before, ever, Man. who would it be? Um, they have to be alive, though. They can't be dead. Oh, we're not fair. doing this whole like we're not doing this whole resurrection ancient shit because ain't nobody got that magic nowadays. I would, I'd pick Jesus because his books sell really well. So oh, man, look if you go <laughs> if, if you go on that route, your best bet is to do Oprah since her books sell the true. second best. Yeah. All right, so since she sells the second best, if you add yours to hers, y'all gonna win. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I so want a book. About go ahead, Doug. Book writers or yes. any kind of writer. All right, man, you know what? Go on. Comic book writers, preferably, but if you pull some some shit like Doug, oh, well, Douglas Adams is dead, but like Neil Neil, uh, Gaiman and whatnot, I couldn't argue against you because, yes, he writes novels, but he also does comic books as well. Okay. I was about to be like, Gaiman's known for comics and novels, bro. What are you talking about? That's a comic book. Yeah, yeah. Proceed, Doug. Sorry. Of course, because, like, I feel like I could learn so much from him that I would co-write with him for a different reason other than writing a book that I wanted to do. You know, be like, <laughs> I know he's going to, just being around him and working with him would like increase my knowledge like tenfold. So like, I'd be like, hell yeah. Um, I would, I mean, there's so many people that I love their work. Um, I'm going to have to go with Brian K. Vaughn. If you're just going straight up comic books, Ooh. I want to see what I would do with Brian K. Vaughn because like the guy just knows story and like, you know, it seems like almost everything he touches turns to gold, and it's just mad. Like the, his fans love his work, right? And so, like Paper Girls was phenomenal. You know, so I, I haven't been, I haven't caught up on Saga in a long time, but Saga, you know, the first couple of years was phenomenal. Agreed. Um, so I would love to like see what would happen there. If I get to pick somebody from film, I would love to see what I could do with Guy Ritchie. Ooh. You know, like I think we have different aesthetics. And being able to see if we could mix those, I think would be a lot of fun. Man, firstly, no, no. I just I think it's funny because Guy Ritchie was actually specifically brought up uh, when we were interviewing Stephen Grant um, as far as whether he would let uh, he would let him uh, touch Whisper. I believe it was correct, Hardaway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it yes. was. It was Whisper. Uh, it was yeah, Whisper. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's that's. That's Stephen Grant's character. So I think it's funny. So I'm curious out of that, like what if Guy walked up to you and was like, look, man, I want to do vinyl, but I, I just, I don't want to have to deal with you. I just want to be able to go and do vinyl. 
right? Uh-huh. Would you do it? <laughs> Ooh, the hard question. <laughs> the hard question is like, yeah, Guy Ritchie wants to do vinyl, but I'm not allowed to have any say. And he doesn't want to be <laughs> yeah. with me. That's a scary, that's a scary thought. Cause like when they typically when somebody says that, that means they're gonna mess it up so bad, they're gonna change everything. And that would terrify me. Um I would have to sit and think about that one for a while. I'd be like, <laughs> you know, like, okay, well, wait a minute. If I give this to you and I let you do whatever you want to do with it, and I don't get any say, and you're not going to tell me, then I need more money up front because now you're making it about money. You're not making it about Doug's, you know, paper baby. <laughs> <It's> yeah. like, <laughs> if, but if it's not about right. Doug's paper baby, then well, I let's want switch it. Let's switch it. Let's <laughs> say Guy Ritchie walks up to you and is like, "Look, Doug." I absolutely love vinyl the way you and just starts going into things about the story like specifics like like man the fact that you you know had her wear the twins like that was beautiful and the way like like that you wrapped things around and you could tell he enjoyed the story would that make you a little less hesitant oh yes yeah if you can you know you can tell when you're talking to somebody like if, if he's bringing up all that stuff and he's like hey i love this i want to put i want to make sure this makes it to the film then yeah, you, you get a little bit more trust him, and you're like, yeah, of course, you know, like it's Guy Ritchie. So I would love to see what he would, you know, if he loved vinyl and he got it, you know, he understood it. Then I'd be like, yeah, of course I'd hand it over to him because I'm right. sure he's going to do a killer job. Somebody do uh, me a so favor. He, if anybody watching this podcast somehow knows Guy Ritchie, I know that's a long shot. Do me a favor and just <laughs> make him read vinyl, and that would be phenomenal. And I hope you are involved, by the way. I'm just saying under the extreme circumstance of if he just wants to like, but because that's that's a director well, I do think would do great work with that. See, he, 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 don't he forget does. people, even if you don't know Guy Ritchie, I'm sure he has a Twitter. So just butt him. Yeah. So just re- retweet final, his name. Doug Wagner once says he wants to work with you. <laughs> that's all you got to just keep retweeting it. Retweet it, retweet it, retweet it, retweet it. Shared, like, shared, like. Do the whole nine yards, you know, say comment on it and say agree, 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 agree. Do the whole nine yards. I guarantee we can bully Guy Ritchie and the read and vinyl. And do it. if we can bully a whole studio to change Sonic to make him look right, I'm pretty sure we can get a writer to do be like, hey, man, we need you to work and go make some more money for yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. that's one thing we all got to remember in this world is when these opportunities come, it ain't about anything but the fact that it's fun and there's money involved. Well, let me flip this, right? <clears throat> Cause I'm curious, Doug, overall with everything. And I mean, the industry, the world has changed so much from, you know, those spindle with comic and you could walk into a seven 11 or wherever. And they were, I mean, they were all on no the magazine shelves. Fans. Yeah. They were all on the magazine shelves though. At, Kroger and Walmart and everywhere, like individual issues you could grab, not little packs like they have at Walmart now, which kind of pisses me off. But that's besides the point, like, because it's like, what, I can read the first three issues of something and then I got to go seek this crap, like, on a whole different level because you guys don't carry any of it? Do it right, Walmart. If you're going to get your comic on, get your comic on. Do it right. Put it on the damn magazine shelves. Come on. Um, But what do you think the overall effect as far as just streaming services and all of that have done as far as on the industry. Because obviously that's another thing that has made it to where way more comic book material has been turned into a different medium. Whether it be animated, uh, a short uh, film, you know what I mean? Just an entirety of a film. Or turning into a series. I mean, there's so much coming out that I don't even want to try and keep track of everything that's comic book related that comes out in film and TV. Because I have a son and not that kind of time. <laughs> yep. That's fair. You know, he's three, bro. I don't have that kind of time. I think it's been twofold. So I think, just like you said, the cool thing about all the streaming stuff and the fact that there's so much content coming out, it's helped the industry and especially with indie creators and that we're getting to see them make more money and see their properties grow to a level we probably would have never seen before without streaming services. The flip side of that, I think, is that streaming services have taught people to binge watch. And so the monthly comic is a tougher sell, I think, now than, say, the trades. So I sell far more trades than I do the individual books. And I think a lot of that is because, hey, it's a self-contained story, and I don't, have to re- I don't have to wait a month in between each issue. I get to read the whole story at my pace. 
And so I think that's changed readers' habits or viewers' habits in that they like to get all of the story in as quickly as possible versus like, you know, where we grew up, we're like, we're okay with the monthly, like, hey, it's okay that Uncanny X-Men isn't going to be out for another four weeks. I'll wait for it. Even though it was only 22 pages at a time. I think the younger group, and even some of, you know, I think it's affected the older group too. And the fact that they're used to like, I'm going to sit down and watch six hours of Sandman, you know, and just watch the whole thing. You know, and it was glorious. Oh yeah. I loved it. I still need to get the time to watch that damn series. It's on my list. It, it, it was a absolute beautiful piece of artwork, man. <clears throat> um, but no, I agree. Uh, 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 well, wait, 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 though. You said it was two fold, Doug. That's only yeah, one fold. Yeah. No, the one fold was, one. was uh, that it helped. You're getting oh, it's helped. My bad. They're Never coming. mind. I missed, yeah, they're coming in. I missed one of the fold. You're turning pages too quick, Doug. Right? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Right? I was appreciating <laughs> the art, and all you're doing is See, reading am, the words, bro. <laughs> I am that guy because, like, I'm a valiant comics, like, Super fanatic, like that's my favorite comic book company. They just create the type of characters that I love. Like Ninjax, my dude. Um, uh, Ray is like awesome. I love Archer and Armstrong, they're goofy as fuck. Um, Quantum and Woody, just goofy. You know, I I, I love that they're stuck with superpowers, they don't really want them. One well, one does, one doesn't, and it's just goofy. All mm-hmm. right, I love that. Now, mind you, um, I wish I knew where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you're a binge watcher. I'm a binge watcher. Yes. No, I uh, actually waited until Unity got until like the 22nd, 23rd issue before I was like, all right, I'm gonna buy each one because I didn't have at the time they didn't have a compendium of them all or what is it, a graphic novel? I guess they're called. Um, wait, but wait. Um, they didn't have. Did you just say? A graphic novel, I guess they're called, and you're one of the co-hosts of the questionnaire. No, like, I call them compendiums because I, like, I've been playing a lot of Dungeons I, and Dragons. And, it's like, fine. Uh, it's okay. It's fine. RPG, uh, it's it's the RPG. Way. RPG. So when it comes to like collections of things, I, I think <laughs> compendium for some reason, and not graphic novel. I was just like, holy crap! <laughs> but <laughs> they did. <laughs> you shush. Um, they didn't have the graphic novels and whatnot, so I would just wait for long periods of time and then just buy them all at once and whatnot. So I'll just save my comic book money at the time, and then I found out that I could just read them on my my phone through these apps, and I was like, "Wait, what?" I was like, "Yeah, I got a library card." <laughs> so, um, that's actually how I got uh plastic and the only thing that upset me was is now i can't have like specific pages posted up on my wall and whatnot no, none of the super graphic ones just like <laughs> the the ones where he was like when 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 mom and lacro was <laughs> looking out at the sunset and whatnot like i would love that on my wall <laughs> I, I think that would be great um <laughs> or when they fell over and, and they they kissed. I was yeah. like, "This is that was beautiful." I was like, "That's that 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 little scene posted." People be like, "That is just morbid as hell." I was like, "You got to know the story though." <laughs> it's about love. Come on, man. I gotta say, yeah, man, I'm real. I feel like in plastic, in both plastic and vinyl, you you've written two great stories, dude, that are so translatable to film. Now I'm curious, and I mean that's strictly my opinion. Uh, when you were writing those, and even when you're writing, when you were writing plush, was that something that you were thinking, like, or yeah. were you just okay? Yeah, no, I'm I'm not a guy that thinks about what happens to the story after I'm done with it. I'm I'm not writing comics to get into film. Um, that's never a thought to me. I write comics because I love comics, and I'm writing a comic. I don't like. I know there's some people that like try to use comics to like help them sell an idea to Hollywood. Um, that's not me. I mean, uh, that's, you know, more power to him trying to figure that out. But like, I just, I just want to write the best comic I can. That's all I'm focused on. So, you know, uh, yeah. Do I think cinematically? I think so. But I don't think that's like the, the, the end result to me. No, no, Doug, you think cinematically. Okay. 
Okay, I'm 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 like straight up, bro. From from someone else that does it as well, because I know that's how my brain runs. Just you, for anyone that's like, go listen to anything by Killer Factor. That's just how it runs. And from the work I've read from you, dude, you think cinematically. <laughs> it's, it's not even a question to me, which is phenomenal. I think as a writer, because I mean, you hear, I hear you say that other people are using it strictly to try and to get it into a film. Do you think that's something? That affects everything in the entirety as far as the comic book industry. If you've got people that have realized at this point, well, oh, you know, I really want to make a film, but maybe if I make it a comic first, it'll get turned into a film. Do you think that's something that has, I would probably say, more of a negative impact on the comic book industry as a whole? Oh, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I think what's fun about it to me is that retailers have sniffed that out now. So I think retailers can tell when your comic is made to really be a pitch to Hollywood and they don't buy it. You know, you see them like fail more than, you know, as far as numbers are concerned, they're, they're, they don't do well in comparison. I think, I think retailers can tell when you're writing to try to make a film versus you're writing to make a comic. And so that's kind of, but I'm with you. Like the problem is that adds noise, right? So on the stands, I'm competing against other books and here's one where they're like, they don't really care about the comic as much as if hopefully being a pitch for a film where like, the majority of the rest of us are like, we just love comics and want to sell comic books. So I think it has like, it does hurt it in that way. Like there's just too much noise on the stands. Cause I mean, what is it like 500 books a month come out? You know, it's, it's an astronomical amount and trying to compete and stand out in that, that crowd is tough enough as it is. So what was it in that with you when, uh, I mean, you hooked up with image, you know what I'm saying? Cause I mean, that's one of the bigger publishers around and much respect to image for, everything they've done from like how they started as far as just kind of like a fuck you to the big two, because you know, I'm not going to sit here and create character and character and character and character and character after character. And then literally, Oh, it's yours. That was awesome. You just took my thoughts. Um, but I understand at the same time, why Marvel and DC do that. Let me make that clear. You know what I mean? Because they're trying to run it at a, that's just, that's just how everything runs. It's how it turned out. It's, based on the fact that in a lot of ways, the Marvel and DC universe were set up by a couple motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't as many people are in the comic book industry that are writing for Marvel and DC respectively. Now is not near what it was when it was turned into, you know, the justice league and the Avengers. So I understand mm -hmm. them wanting to keep it closer to that aspect, but I also understand, like I said, what image has done as far as they wanted their own characters. So what was it like for you, man, to know that, you got under, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say, I'm pretty sure they're, I know they're in the top five publishers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're like, number three right now. They're yeah. number, okay, that's why, I didn't want to say that and be wrong. I was pretty positive it was right, especially that, you know, Top Cow is a subsidiary of Image, so you have all of that in that as well. And again, I love, I love Top Cow. Shout out to Matt for fucking starting this quest with us twice, man. You'll never see the first one, y'all. <laughs> You'll never see the first one. But, uh, yeah, because what was that like, man, to know that you were going to that imprint and that's where your book was going to go as opposed to having to deal with self-publishing it? I mean, dude, you know, I mean, it's, you know, anytime, you know, Image continues to, like, put out my books and every time they approve something, I'm still shocked. You know, like, I, I don't know if it's like, you know, like your ego's a problem or whatever, but like, I love image. Like Eric Stevenson's a, a wonderful part. You know, he's always been great to me. I've heard, you know, people, there's people that don't like him. Of course, anytime I think you're in a, a role of authority, people are not going to like you. But like, Eric's always been wonderful to me. I love working with image. Um, and I'm like super proud to be part of a company that I feel like really is about creator rights. So to me, that's a huge deal. And I love that aspect. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled beyond belief every time they approve a book. I think it's funny that you, you're still amazed, but at the same time, I've read a good deal of what you wrote. So I can understand you're like, you're going to let me put this out. Like, <laughs> yeah, see, see, that's the thing. Like, I, I, really? I, would, I wouldn't think that at all because of the sheer fact that what you write is it. I'm not a type of person that'll go on a killing spree. I'm not. Like, it, now, mind you, if my daughter was involved, the whole world could burn. All right? But that's besides the point. I should not be able to relate to a dude who's got his mama's skull in the trunk. He's talking to a dead cop next to him. And 
picked up a hitchhiker chick who don't know what the fuck's truly going on. She's just going with the flow. All right. So it's like, I should not be able to relate to a donut fiend like that. But I'm sitting here going like, man, I hope he makes it out this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, I'm hoping he gets his girl back. I'm like, I'm hoping that like these motherfuckers learn their lesson. And I was like, they fucking dickheads, so they deserve everything they get. And anyway, you see how they treat the cows? Look how he's trying to get power. You know what I'm saying? I was like, they some bitches. So get them. And I'm, I'm sitting there like going, go, Eugene. Go, Eugene. You know what I'm saying? This whole entire time. So I'm like, no, I should not be able to relate to a character like that. I'm sitting here like back in the day, I was the type of person that I was like, Jesus, save my soul type shit. And now I'm sitting here going like this, man, take that cleaner and shove it down that man's throat because he got a bad mouth. You know well, what I'm saying? Like, I, <laughs> I want to I wanna bring up another character, man. Like and, that. and I apologize that her name escapes my brain. But the hitchhiker that he picks up. Well, well I Wait, should say shit uh, saves from the cop. Veronica. What what made you write her the way you did as far as like she's seen this horrific nifts and accepted it? Now, uh, I'm curious. Let me let me uh, put a little spin on this question. Do you think was that um, a perspective of how. Uh, shit, what's the f- word I'm looking for? Um, desensitized, how desensitized we have become to such things, because I kind of feel like in reading that. There was a certain representation of society within that character and the fact that we become desensitized to just violence and cruelty to a certain degree. Yeah, and I, you know, I mean, with Gwen, she kind Gwen, of became, thank you. became the cipher for the audience. So as messed up as she is, that's like you're saying, that's, that's a comment almost on American society, right? Like we're not... We're, we're very dysfunctional, even as, as a society, we're very dysfunctional at this point. And so bringing her in and having her a little bit confused and then going, this person who clearly does some crazy shit, just like Hardaway was saying, <laughs> right? He did save me and he clearly will stand by me. And so I think people are just looking for somebody who will, will take their side and be beside them and are willing to overlook some of their flaws as long as it's not necessarily immediately impactful to them. You know what I mean? Like as long as you're not going to kill me, you know, we can run together. But like, you know, if, if that were to ever to turn, obviously Gwen, I think would have turned on him. And that's what I'm saying. Like everybody Eugene ran into was, he was, he was so nice, so respectful. Even the dudes that kidnapped them, he was like, look, just give me Veronica back. Let me go. We can let all the we we can forget all this real quick. <laughs> then they did something disrespectful, and he was like, "That's it. That's it. You, you, your mama, your daddy, everybody that's involved gonna get it. They are gonna catch a hot one." And you're like, "You don't even carry a gun." He's like, "That's fine. I don't need that's one. fine. Don't you need one." Yeah. <laughs> I want to like, know, like my. When he broke that nigga's leg, leg with the grocery bag, I lost. I, lo- I was like, yes, that's how you handle a dumb shit. But so real quick, no, no, no. Life. To talk, to refer exactly <laughs> to the scene that, that or well, in the scenes in the page that Hardaway's referring to, why did those dudes think she was a real chick? Well, at first, I think what we wanted to play off on, if you, if you go back and read it, like when they're coming up, you know, we were kind of playing on that whole real doll thing. And if you saw a real doll in a car, Right. When you're walking up, you would you would you would just kind of see shadows and that kind of thing. And you go, hey, she's hot. And then like, I don't, I, you know, I haven't read it myself in a while, but like if I'm remembering it right, when they realize that she's a, a blow up doll, then they start like making fun of her. You know, they're like, hey, babe, you know, yeah. like, oh, wait a minute. I thought I was hitting on a hot chick. This is a blow up doll. Let's make fun of her. You know, and they clearly go too far, you know. A little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. You know, just a little bit. Look, it, it, look, they could have caught that ass whooping and let it be. Uh, but, and see, this is the thing. This is how you know they weren't. They did not know they were messing with John Wick's younger cousin. All right, like the more like messed up one that just don't truly understand how to get away from <laughs> with things. 
like having um one of those like sealant pens, you know what I'm saying, that seals the okay. wounds, mm-hmm. you know. But he was like, plastic's gonna handle that. And I was like, you know, in most cases, you ain't wrong. But <laughs> but in this situation, this is this is you need one of those pens. But I was so hoping. He would have been like, yeah, we can go to the hospital after you help me kill these motherfuckers. I was like, yeah, survive. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. I'm sorry, spoiler alert and whatnot. Oh, well, it was a great story. Still you, read it. You totally um, gave a spoiler alert after you gave the spoiler. They're not supposed to work that way. <laughs> can I just say, though? Like, Doug, yeah, you I, know, there, there's this part of me that's like... You said you, I was autistic, didn't you? And then I messed things... And well, like, I, I mean, bro, we both are, but that's not in here nor there. But there's this other part of me that's wondering is like... Are these two motherfuckers ever going to shut up? I wonder if Doug's wondering that. Like, how long could this oh, interview yeah, go? Oh, yeah, damn, I'm sorry. Like, how long could this interview literally go? Which, <laughs> I, I assure you, I think it could actually go a, a good deal more time. I'm not going to lie, because I know there's quite a more. Yeah, I'm sorry, bro. I completely Doug. forgot we were yeah. on an interview. I thought we were just chilling and talking. <laughs> That's that religion in hip-hop. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Doug, I'll be honest. I also have to edit this. Yeah, that's, that's on you. That's not my problem. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of TikToks, though, bro. Yeah, that's a lot of TikToks. <laughs> hey, that's a lot of TikToks and little YouTube clips and whatnot. Then when they watch the real episode, those clips aren't actually in the uh, episode and whatnot just to mess with them. Even more and whatnot, call it <laughs> call it uh, Doug Wagner episode, uh, whatever number this is, point one and point double, two. No, but double X. Oh, double X 200. Double X 200.1, then double X 200.2, and double X 200.3. You know what I'm saying? Like, do it like that just to mess with people and whatnot. Bro, do it like they, they did a bro, bro, you're about to make me snap. I don't need that much editing. Do you understand this? But I want to say real quick, man, like, if, if y'all are a fan <laughs> of those darker comics, right, I highly recommend vinyl and I highly recommend plastic. Um, and I'm I'm a fan of darker comics, man. I always have been. My favorite characters. Are, and it's funny some of the some of the characters you've said throughout this interview, Doug. You're like Lobo. I'm like hell yeah, Deadpool. Hell yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I am the Wade Wilson of hip hop. I respect. Like I love that you said that, dude. Like the characters that you brought up are just phenomenal. Like, and I would even say Evil Learning. Like these are the characters I was always a fan of. So I mean, if you're into the things like that, that darker side of comics, I I would highly recommend vinyl and uh shit i about said plush but it ain't out yet vinyl and plastic right i can't well, recommend we'll plush. When it I, just comes out. I mean you'll be able to pick up the at least the first issue but it, like i said i i so i won't recommend right. something i haven't read doug i'm sorry it's okay i'm, I'm sorry i I'm just not offended i won't but i will i assure you when that graphic drops i'll be picking it up man because i'm um it's it's phenomenal work it is, man. And I appreciate you so much, but I don't want over two hours to edit, right? Gotcha. Because yeah. I know I'm going to have it soon, and we'll discuss that certainly. We got, you know. we, got 15, we, we got 15 minutes before we hit that two-hour mark. You know, Hardaway, I can see how long this has been recording. <laughs> I mean, I'm just. It's that, yo, Doug. Yeah. It's that religion of hip hop, if you feel me. You know what I mean? No, I, was, I tried to trick him, bro. And my, my deception roll was just poor. That's all it was. I rolled a one. <clears throat> I tried, but I felt oh miserably. God. It's okay, though. I'll raise my skill up. All I want to know, all I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to plush, especially like you literally listen to disco. While writing this, which, which in man, yeah, that's very, that makes it even more enticing in my opinion to think that that's what you were listening to when you were writing the wrap up to the trilogy that began with plastic and then went to vinyl like that. I, that's not ever something I would have expected at all. See, Doug. And I it has been a I pl- do got a question. Oh, well, I'm ask sorry. Me, no, there's, a, there's a last one. All right. It's not even just a question. It's a suggestion. All right. Since you listen to music during your uh, writings and stuff like that, just a suggestion. Find a way to put a way to read your comics with that soundtrack in the background while the people are reading the comics digitally. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And no. stuff like that. So like, no, no, all I got to say is, points. 
Yeah, Hardaway, you're right, because there's only one comic book company I've ever seen do that. Doug, do you know who I'm referring to? No. Chaos Comics, yeah. back in the day. When you picked up a book, they would have, we recommend you listen to such and such and such and such while you read this. All right? They, I remember that because I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Chaos, uh, mm -hmm. or, or was, I should say. God, that account sucked. Um, like, for real, for real. Right. So, so yeah, Hardaway's got a brilliant idea in that, but I mean, that's mm -hmm. something you would have to start, but and then, you know, like each issue, I recommend you will listen to this particular track. It's what that's, that's a phenomenal idea. Hardaway. I just I had to point that. out that it has been done at one point. It was just the fucking nineties. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I just, I, when I, there's a, one of my favorite web tunes is called ordeal. Mm -hmm. And when there, when you get to, the really dark or ominous scenes and stuff like that, they'll have music playing in the background uh, while you're reading it and stuff like that to give that like that chill feel and whatnot. Like there's a part where one of the uh, main villains came bursting in and you just heard this like real soft, dark tone. And then you're like, what the hell's going on? And then the next page you flip over and the, the crescendo hits, and you're just like, holy fucking shit! Because this dude just burst through the wall, and three just died, and everybody's just flipping out, just like, whoa! Because they're all going hard, thinking they're the baddest people in the world, and then this dude just came through, just like, look, I'm about to tear your whole universe asunder. <laughs> and ain't nobody gonna recognize you after I'm done. And... The music's just blaring, and you're just like, and it tells you to listen to uh, to have headphones on while you're uh, reading this comic and whatnot. But I'm just like, if I was sitting there reading like Plush, for instance, when when Plush comes out, and you're like sitting there listening to disco and stuff like that, that would me that would really mess things up. And the reason is, is because you're listening to essentially happy music. So horrid things happening. That's one of my favorite things about some films, like um, some of uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino's films and whatnot. You got really happy music, and then is that nothing? Nothing's happy going on. You know what I'm saying? It's like, or like you get uh, some of this uh, My Chemical Romance shit and stuff like that. They have really happy tones, but the lyrics are just like. Bro, I just, I just gotta flip this real quick because I do. I, I think, like, dude, I I kind of want to listen to disco while I read plush now. Like, I kind of want to <laughs> recommend like listening list to you while I sit down and read that. Even though that idea kind of horrifies me based on what Hardaway just said, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm sitting here like I, I still think you might need to find a therapist that works for you so you can recommend them to me, Doug. Right? But that's okay. Totally I'll besides the point, man. <laughs> Dude, you wrote plush while you were listening to disco. He you a notebook and a pencil. <laughs> That would be pretty. Oh, man, I already got a notebook and a pen. Whatever, bro. I'll fucking. I'll, I guess I'll start writing comics too, right? Um, but I'm curious, man. Just, just. I man, I got to take this back. One more thing. I swear, we got questions on top of questions on top of questions, and that's just. It is the quest. Um, based on what you said, you're currently reading. Do you read anything from the big two? Not currently. I, I, I have. You know, it's a. I've tried a couple of different books. The problem is a lot of them are so thick and, and you know, I, well, always love the X-Men, but I can't, I don't, like you said earlier, I don't have the time to read 14 titles of just the X-Men every month. Well, first, so think, oh no, and if you're talking about the X-Men, dude, the, the Avengers versus X-Men, you have to read almost every title Marvel puts, puts out. Uh, right. The, the AXE that they're doing right now, which is the Avengers, mm -hmm. Exiles, and the uh, Eternals, yeah, you pretty much have to read... At least half, I would say, of what they put out to really, really get a good depth of the story. So I understand that. To that end, do you think that's one of the problems that kind of also drives people away, specifically more than anything, from the big two? Because when you get into big events, oh my it's God. a lot. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they've gotten a little too carried away with these like massive events, like you said, that you have to understand the event book you're reading – 
you have to also read the 10 Batman titles, the four Superman titles, you know, the six Wonder Woman titles to try to get it all. And I think I understand it from a sales point, you know, like from a business standpoint, you're like, hey, we want people to buy more of our books. But at the same time, like I'm with you, like it, it drives me away, you know, and I love it's a lot. Um, yeah, it's just a lot. You know, it's too much. It a lot. You know, we're talking it, about like what, $70, $80 just to, to understand an event for the month. That's a lot. Yeah, that it is. It is a lot. No, and I'll I, tell I you, got, no, I no, hard away, hard away. No, you don't, because it's a lot last one. to edit it. It's a lot. To it's last edit. one. I, I swear. I promise. I, I no, promise. because last then I'm going to think important. of another, and it's going to keep going. Hard away. Did you not no, notice no, the this rhythm is, of I this? I swear. I promise. It's the last one. I, I swear, real it's quick. Really you've been a phenomenal guest. If I ask a question after this, tell me to shut the hell up, would you? I will. I will, good sir. I said I will. Doug, I will. not you, all right. Hardaway. You Can do it you, all the time anyway. It is a request. It is a request, more so than anything, all right, which is a question. Ha-ha. All right. Can you write a comic about Brother Lin Chong? L li listen to this man's music and stuff like that in the universe he paints and whatnot. Because with Twisted Insane, Brother Lin Chong, and whatnot, like, Oh my God! Now eat. Go, write that down. Write that down. Uh, okay. Watch now eat. All right. It is. It is a. It's the entire album, and it's a movie. It's a horror huh. horror movie. All I right? wonder if Doug's getting sick of taking notes during his interview. Let me pull up the page. What's the big deal? <laughs> okay. you, guys, All right. you guys are just giving me thirty hours of homework. <laughs> Um, I, I'm sorry, but that that one, I think, in all honesty, with the way you write and the artist that you work with, and you might be able to do something with it. I'm not. I'm not. I know people tell you and suggest things all the time and stuff like that. I'm sure, and and shit like that. But at least I only suggested like it, one thing during this hard during this hard away. You suggested like bro, ten, and now you're telling him I'm to get into the entire. Nerd. And look, then no, you're dude, telling him to get into the entire category of brother Lynch Young, Which yeah, look, he says he no, consumes media, which means he is like a person I mean, of my soul and heart. Which that's why I was just like, hey, if you consume media and it has to be good media, not bad media, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. look, and mind you, now he is B rated than a motherfucker, but it's good. <laughs> All right, hold on. Yeah, hard away, awesome. hard away, hard away. Please, no more questions. Doug, I'm I done. do have to agree with hard away in being a fan of Brother Lynch Hung. That if you really looked and invested, you could probably honestly, sincerely write a hell of a comic off of that. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you just based on what I know on the man. You've also, Doug, been a hell of a guest, and I think. Probably the only one that needs therapy as much as the rest of the motherfuckers in this group, right? <laughs> I'm going to say that much, man. Before we go, can I get you to be like, yo, this is Doug Wagner. Make sure you're tuning into the questionnaire every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you say whatever you want beyond that. If you want to throw in, you know, I mean, w whatever you want to throw in, Doug. I, yeah, it's all you. Okay, this is Doug Wagner. You guys should be watching the questionnaire every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time because these motherfuckers are crazy. How's that? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh, my God. I got so much <laughs> shit I need to cut together. I really do. That's why I'm not making this interview go any longer, y'all. I hope you have enjoyed it. I do. Oh, I've had a blast. You guys right. are awesome. I'm glad you have, Doug. And I want to say, though, if you, all y'all watching have enjoyed this, and Doug, right, firstly – <laughs> Go check out the links in the description. The man is a hell of a writer, right? And I also want you, holy shit, where's that answer? To send him some Alberto's Natorito. Or, or if you've really, really, really dug it. God, you made this shit hard to fucking say, Doug. I swear on my life, right? A two-foot-tall <laughs> Mazina toy? Oh, Mazinga. Mazinga. Yeah, Mazinga. Send him a yeah. two-foot-tall Mazinga, right? Now, firstly, the man didn't give me the answer I'd like to use because apparently he just wants to hang out with dragons and demons and gnomes and trolls and elves and everything all at damn well once, right? But the interview gave me my answer, right? So if you didn't like the interview and you don't like Doug Wagner, send him a crimson xenomorph. Mm, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah.
Nice. Have a good night, y'all. <laughs> well, that's horrible. Peace. Peace.